Some students have a nice warm bed to sleep in. Some students have a nice selection of clothes to choose from. Some students get to have a hot, warm meal every morning. Some students get to have friends over for a fun weekend. Some students don't get a warm bed to sleep in. They rely on benches, cars, or cardboard boxes to sleep in. Some students don't get a warm meal. They're lucky if they get a meal at all or someone else's leftovers. Some students don't get to have fun on the weekends. They're alone in a park walking aimlessly. Some students rely on the kindness of others for a meal. The Empty Bowl Project, helping homeless students and families in the Moreno Valley. A film by Valley View High School Eagle Pro with Vanguard Community Art Gallery, the Salvation Army of Moreno Valley, California, and narrated by Chris Black. Without a driving force behind the Empty Bowl Project, it would have never been accomplished. Let's meet the man with the passion, Rick Archer, from the Moreno Valley Cultural Arts Foundation, who's responsible for this amazing project. Um, I, I began this uh, effort back uh, in 2011, and the whole purpose of uh, uh, my, my particular vision was the fact that I wanted to, to do something that was going to have a positive impact as far as the uh, city of Moreno Valley. Uh, you know, the concerns I had at the time was the fact that, you know, here we have a, a, a crisis situation of double-digit unemployment. We have one of the highest foreclosure rates. And there's a number of other issues uh, as far as the city is concerned that, that you know, are problematic. And uh, I felt that one of the solutions to the problem is by having a, a vibrant arts community. And so as a result, uh, I was uh, provided the opportunity to, uh, to head up the uh, Moreno Valley Cultural Arts Foundation. And in doing so, uh, what we've done is we've focused on trying to provide opportunities for local artists uh, of all genres. So it's more than just visual arts, uh, but it's also the performing arts and it's literary arts. And, um, um, you know, the, the, one of the things that we're trying to accomplish here is that we're trying to, to create a, um, an effective network between artists and local commerce, local government, education, faith-based organizations, and the community at large. So as a result, we're you know, working very diligently to be able to uh, create these partnerships in terms of building a much stronger community. So uh, you know, we're a very strong advocate as far as arts and education, uh, we've been very fortunate in terms of establishing back in August 2012 the Vanguard Community Art Gallery, uh, which has been, um, um, you know, a grassroots effort, but it's been very successful in terms of being able to provide opportunities for well over 50 local artists, uh, and that effort continues to grow. In conjunction with the Path to Life Ministries, the Moreno Valley Salvation Army has jumped on board against the fight against homelessness. 
They have joined forces with the Moreno Valley Cultural Arts Foundation for the Empty Bowl Project. Here to expound on what the Salvation Army does is Captain Julius Murphy. My name is Captain Julius Murphy. I'm the Corps Officer and Administrator of the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army is partnering with the Marina Valley uh, Cultural Arts Foundation. They're the organization that's putting on the Empty Bowl Project. The funds raised from the Empty Bowl Project will go to support um, homeless families or individuals who um, are in danger of being homeless. And we realize that the need in Marina Valley is great. It's far beyond what we could serve. And so we're looking to collaborate with other agencies, the school district, other businesses, uh, to bring forth programs that could meet everyone's need so that no one is left hungry, no one is left homeless, no one is left impoverished, that everyone could live a uh, self-sufficient as well as a, um, a good, wholesome life uh, in Marina Valley. Next, we're gonna meet two families that have endured homelessness. Our first family, the Fergusons, a mother of two teenage kids, have been for the past 18 months living at the Path of Life Ministry. The three of them have shared a room the size of an average bedroom, but with the help of the Path of Life Ministry, they'll be moving into an apartment all of their own. Next up is the Sarah family. Up until last October, they were living the American dream in a five bedroom house and then it all came crashing down. After struggling to survive living out of motels and cars, they found the Path of Life Ministry. And with their help, in the next few months, they too will be moving back into an apartment all of their own. Here's a few of the artists with their bowls they created for the Empty Bowl Project. Hi, I'm Jenny Bate and I'm a visual artist. Uh, I have been painting seriously since 2001 and I've been selling my work since uh, 2003. The latest project that I've gotten involved with is for um, the Vanguard Gallery, and it is the Hunger Bowl project. Uh, we are given bowls like this one, and we were told to decorate the bowl as we saw fit on the theme of what hunger and homelessness means to us. One of the uh, aims of this project is to raise awareness about the stigma of being homeless, especially as a child or a teenager, and to reduce that stigma so people are not afraid of saying, I'm homeless. None of this would have been possible without the hard work and support from the faculty and student body of Valley View High School. Let's listen to just a few of the people who donated their time and talent to the Empty Bowl Project. Mr. Birnbaum, I'm the art club advisor, and I'm also an art teacher here at Valley View. Um, <clears throat> well, the inspiration came when, when the uh, director of the Reno Valley Community Arts Foundation um, contacted us. And, uh, since we have an art club here at school, we thought it might be an interesting project for the art club to, to uh, participate in. And so I presented it to the art club and they thought it was a neat idea to kind of uh, gain some involvement in the community uh, through the making of art. And as an art teacher, we all know, <clears throat> art teacher and artist, we all know that um, art has, plays a really powerful um, role in uh, communicating ideas and it has a, can play a powerful role in empowering human beings, um, and especially in this case, the um, kind of looking at those who are homeless in our community and those who are living um, lives of hunger. And so we thought this might be a really great opportunity to kind of um, focus on that idea. My name is Rizio Solis. The inspiration was of homeless, and it deals with hunger. To pretty much help homeless people, I don't know, to raise awareness. I thought that it would be both something um, that would bring a lot of creative freedom and also that it had a good cause. It's like you raise money for people who need it. My name is Miss Davis. I'm an art teacher here at Valley View High School. 
Um, well, each year with the art club, we'd like to do something that's community-based. Last year, um, the art students in the club made valentines and gave them to the Senior Citizen Center at their Valentine's dance. So we were looking for something to do that would benefit the community this year. We went and picked up our bowls, and we're getting started with our ideas about how each of the students can individualize and come up with a creative solution to to the idea of turning a bowl into something that is art. The Empty Bowl Project is something I heard about with the art group I'm in called Art 2000. And we were invited to do a project uh, with the uh, Bowl Project. And, um, you know, I was very surprised to hear about how many homeless people were in Los Angeles. I mean, not Los Angeles, in Moreno Valley. I'm in Los Angeles, and I know there's a lot of homeless, and I, you know, my heart goes out to the homeless and I always wish that there was something I could do. You know, you see so many people on the street and you look and you just feel helpless. You wish there was something you can do. And when I heard about this project, I was definitely very interested in getting involved. I'm actually on the board with the Reno Valley Cultural Arts Foundation, so it was just natural that I'd want to get involved with it. Much. I just started, um, I knew I wanted to do a steampunk piece, and I started gathering supplies and taking things apart, and tried to stick with a lot of things that you would find food-related, since it was the empty bowl. So, of course, I've used spatulas and forks and spoons. Yeah. And I'm really sad um, that we have to address this problem. Um, I know how many homeless students there are in the district. I'm really excited to have tried something new and different. I named him Dogo, which is do good. So um, I think that there's a lot of uh, good that the foundation is doing and that I'd love to see people get involved in it. Right now, let's get an insider's view of everything the Path of Life Ministry offers families in need. To explain in more detail what Path of Life Ministry does is the COO, Damian O'Farrell. We service families uh, that are in crisis and homeless, so that's moms with kids, dads with kids, and couples with children. Uh, we also service individuals who find themselves in crisis and in a homeless situation. We serve around 1,500 uh, individuals every single year. Uh, now, that, the number of families, depending upon the size of families, varies uh, throughout each year, uh, but we're in the multiple hundreds of families every single year who are homeless that we are serving. And uh, what's interesting about that is most people, when they think of people who are homeless, are thinking of uh, the typical person they might see on the street or in a corner or on the corner or, or pushing a cart or something, but the majority of those that we serve at Path of Life are children. 55% uh, of those that we serve actually are children, and the majority of those children are under the age of 10 years old. And so that's the real face of homelessness that people don't see. It's what we call the invisible minority, or majority, the invisible majority. And then our transitional housing program uh, actually can serve um, 146 individuals at one time. Usually that's about uh, 30 families. At our transitional housing program, uh, families stay uh, for up to a year, but again, our goal is to move uh, people into the most permanent and self-sufficient housing that they can sustain as quickly as possible. Next, we are going to hear from the director of the Path of Life Ministry, Erica Moses. She will explain the services and opportunities the Path of Life Ministry provides to families in need. It's transitional housing, so it's not a set amount of time. It's designed to move the families into more stable housing. So for some families, it doesn't take as long as others. So we have some that are here for maybe one or two months, and then other families who are with us for 18 months to two years. My name is Tracy Bradley. I've been here for a year and three months. To qualify for a program, it's very simple. Um, you either have to be homeless or on the verge of homelessness, meaning you know, you're know you behind on your rent or your mortgage, um, or it could be people who've been sleeping in their vehicle or coming from another homeless shelter. My name is Sean, it's my wife Debbie, my son Ian, and it's my daughter Lori. We have been here since September of last year. During their stay at Path of Life Ministries, individuals and families also have access to a psychologist. Here they get to mentally and emotionally work through their struggles. To talk more about what she does at Path of Life Ministry is psychologist Kira Berrientos. 
initial intake uh, with the intake specialist, um, they have to go through a process with me as well where I would let them know about the after school program that I run as well as counseling services that I offer. And then the families from there get to choose whether or not they want to take part in counseling services or if they want to decline counseling services or whether or not they want to enroll their children in the after school program. The Path of Life Ministry offers a helping hand to those who are down and in need. And with their help, these families will be able to get back on their feet. To stay, to not be on the streets, needing that, the essential basic services of a bed, showers, laundry facilities, food, maybe some help with clothing, maybe just to get themselves on their feet. If that family has that need and they're willing to work with us, uh, we, we will serve them. Uh, we provide families both emergency shelter and transitional housing. Uh, depending upon where they are and what their needs are at the time. Um, we also provide an array of other services that families need to remain safe and get stable and move towards self-sufficiency in their My life. name is Kyra and I'm one of the clinician interns here that works with the families uh, transitional housing program. Um, I initially work with the kids and you know try to get them to adjust into the program or into the different schools here. Um, but I also work with the family as a whole. Just the people, they're so nice and helpful and you, they always, like, if you have a question, they'll always be able to answer and they're always, they'll always be there in case you're like worried about something or you just feel like you need to talk to somebody, you can just pull them aside and just talk to them. And, I just think it's really comforting to have all these great people here. We got a life coach here. Um, we have counseling whenever we need it. Um, they're real supportive. So I, um, A lot of which we're able to provide on site. Others we work with community partners to make sure that our family's needs are met. Um, and we do that through weekly case management meetings, on site workshops, um, tight budgeting. Um, we go through all their monthly expenses and you know figure out what money they can save and what money we can as far as like looking for a job um saving your money you know when you do when you do um save your money then you're able to um look for an apartment or a house which as me having a job i'm able to save my money you know um that i make and and they double your money you know too so if you like put a hundred dollars in they'll match it you know so that helps um uh, so the other essential services that we provide include uh medical care through our sister agency health to hope and through referrals to other uh, medical service providers who we uh, uh, connect with we provide employment training and getting people ready to go look for a job and the support that they need to find those jobs. And we also have, through another sister organization, Path of Life Enterprises, we have a social enterprise business called Angel Wings Bakery um, that is now providing on-the-job employment training. Uh, uh, other services that we provide include child care, uh, because child care is often uh, a barrier that would keep families from being able to move forward in their life. Uh, if they have to take care of a child at home during the day, it makes it very, very difficult for them to go out and look for work or go to interviews or follow up on appointments or do what they need to do to put their assets into place and to the betterment, betterment of their family. Um, I run an after school program here um, from about 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. And what we do from the first hour is called Power Hour. So we do homework with the children with a lot of outside help from other organizations as far as tutoring is um, concerned. So we have a lot of tutors available to the children. And then the second half of the hour is either a counseling group with myself or some type of activity with another teacher, or we have another art program that comes down and provides art classes with the children. So it's whatever type of art class or whatever type of social emotional curriculum or any other type of activity that will allow the children to grow socially and emotionally that we offer for the second half. So we um, number of other things that might be related to life skills or lack of learning how to budget or save and those sorts of things. Those, those are all obstacles that our families face. But in addition to all of that, they're also in crisis and homeless. It's important not to jump into something wanting it like fixed overnight so that you're not getting back into the group that you're in. 
So you're learning these tools and you're able to yeah, you're able to save and and make realistic goals and and you know, follow them through and that way you know that when you're ready to make that step then you're you're okay. You can breathe and not worry about, you know, where you're you're gonna end up back in hotels or back in our car. We were in our car at one point. And Homelessness is not just a, a simple fix-all problem. Um, anything that would come up for someone on a day-to-day -day basis that wouldn't send us into a moment of crisis, um, for our families it becomes a barrier. And that can be, you know, growing up in generational poverty, meaning that you grew up in poverty and that's all you know, um, and you just continue the cycle and you'll continue that cycle with your children. Um, or it could just be, a, you know, a down on your luck. It could be substance abuse issues, domestic violence, um, and those are the kind of things that our family struggles with. Uh, but we're working towards, first of all, addressing that issue, that, that concept issue in the life of a person, and then also trying to address all of their physical needs, and uh, that's, that's a challenge. Many of the families uh, that, that, that come to us, they have a desire um, to, to make a better life for their family. They obviously have a desire not to be homeless um, and on the streets, but they have a desire to give their children a better life. We're on company again. Um, we graduated from, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, Riverside Center for Change. And along with this program, it's just, it's more or less baby steps, but it's progression, constant progression. And, uh, my biggest Concern moving in was that we were in kind of tight quarters, but we were like that in a motel. But at least here, it, what we pay here is such a minimal amount, it helps us get caught up. Before, when we were in the motel, we were, it was all like a said, go to the rent, so we, we couldn't save, we couldn't get ahead, we just, we couldn't get a leg up. So being here, we've actually started our own company again. Um, During the bad times, you know, we thought, me and I'm sure my sisters thought also that it wasn't going to get better, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. There is one, but it takes a while, you know, you got to be patient, and it's awesome that we're finally reaching it. It's, it's been hard, and it's been long, and it's, but it's, I, I'm so proud of my parents, and I love them for doing this for us. I'm just really happy for my parents, and that I didn't think it was going to get better, honestly, but... I knew my parents had it in them, and they've obviously accomplished what they need to do, and everything's getting better now, and I'm just, I'm just proud of my parents. And so that's what Path of Life is there to do, is to give that hope of a future and give the support that's needed and give the tools that's needed and can connect them with the people that would help them implement all those tools and put, in pl put into action all the assets they have. Well, our program always needs partners uh, to come alongside us uh, to, one, help address the many different barriers that uh, any family may face as they're trying to get themselves out of the cycles of homelessness and poverty. And we know that we can play a part in that, uh, but we can't do it all. Uh, we need partner agencies. We need people within the community with expertise that would come alongside us uh, and help provide the resources that we can't provide uh, in-house. Uh, we also need volunteers to come along and, and provide uh, the relational and emotional support that our, that our families need. Many times what makes the biggest difference in a family's life are not just the tools that they have in place, the things that they've learned to help them succeed, but it's the people around them that they can watch implement those tools in an effective way. Definitely volunteering their time, that's, that's the biggest gift I think that people don't realize is that if you can't give financially, um, willing to dedicate yourself and work with families more than just maybe a weekend here, a weekend there, but on a consistent basis makes the world of difference to our families and to the programs that we provide. Individuals can get involved by, by, by volunteering. Volunteers are, is the best way to get involved with an organization uh, Lastly, let's take a few seconds to get to know a few of the students and faculty that helped bring this documentary to life. Um, my experience creating and helping with this documentary has been a really